Hello and welcome. Um, so 2016 continues to wind down. Uh, only a couple of more weeks to go. Um, I am still reading, of course, but December is my month of rereads. So um, I am wrapping up, though, my first time reads in a, seri a series of wrap-up videos. I just finished uh, and uploaded uh, recently my nonfiction wrap-up and my literary fiction wrap-up. So today I want to... Um, just uh, chat a bit about my science fiction fantasy and wrap up for 2016. Um, in 2016, I ran, read a total of nine uh, works that I consider to be science fiction fantasy. As I completed each of these works, I actually did video chats on them, um, which um, I will put the links to in the details um, down below. So um, let's get to the list, though run through these nine fairly quickly. Um, the first um, book uh, book I read in March, a science fiction book that I read in March, um, I hate to kind of start on a downer, but it was da Ilium by Dan Simmons. I did not particularly um, enjoy this, um, sadly. I it had everything that I thought I would I would enjoy. It had AI. It takes place in, there's time travel. Um, it part of it takes place actually in the Trojan War, uh, you know, in the past, um, and then there's also a post-human sort of far future element to it. Um, so, you know, I it really sounded like something I would would get into. I actually did not, though. Um, I won't go into that so much here. Um, if you're interested in why I didn't particularly enjoy it, uh, check out the chat video I, I did on it. Um, but the next work I read, which was in April, The um, Wandering Earth by Lucy Shin, or C. Shin Lu, I see it sometimes. This is a, a Chinese science fiction um, author, and this was published in 2011 in China and then uh, 2012 in English. Um, this is a novella, so it was very easy to read, very quick and easy to read, but there was a lot of story packed into this small little little novella. Oh, it's such a beautiful story of, um, you know, it's a far distant earth where um, the sun is, you know, about to, be, you know, expand and, and swallow the earth, <coughs> become a red giant, excuse me, um, and um, the uh, people of earth then um, come up with a fairly, um, you know, extreme, I guess, solution, uh, which is to stop the earth's rotation and to send the earth out of orbit of the sun um, to a neighboring star system, um, and this tells that story of the impact on when on a, on one one of the characters. Uh, the story starts with him as a young boy when the Earth's rotation has just stopped. So it was it was really beautiful. Um, and I actually have another uh, work by Lucy Shin. Uh, the Three Body Problem is on my 2017 uh, TBR, so stay tuned for that. So the book I read, next book I read in April was um, The Book of Phoenix by Nettie Okorafor. This was published in 2015. This is a prequel to another work called Who Fears Death. Um, so I decided to read the prequel first, um, even though it was published after Who Fears Death. Um, this tells the story of a character, the main character, um, who is called Phoenix, is a, um, you know, she's a genetically modified, sort of accelerated human, um, and she doesn't really realize that she is what she is exactly, and then uh, through a series of events, she becomes aware of who she is and what she is, and the oppression that she and others like her are under. Are, are living under, and so she seeks uh, liberation from that uh, for her and for others like her. This has some um, elements of, um, at, part of the story takes place in West Africa. This author has, um, is, has ties to West Africa, um, I think Nigeria, and so um, there's some elements of African storytelling in this work, and I, I actually think also in the next work, Who Fears Death, which I actually have on my 2017 beat, 2017 TBR because when I finished this I swore I would go ahead and read Who Fears Death even though it's an apocalyptic novel I usually don't don't read those but um, I decided I would read it so I do have that coming up so then in May I read um, 
Roadside Picnic. This is by the brothers Arkady and Boris Strugatsky, and this particular um, translation was done by Olena Bormashenko in 20. 20- 12. Um, this work was originally published in 1972 in the then Soviet Union. It was published in Russian, um, and so it's 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 considered classic, you know, sci-fi. It's it's a wonderful story, uh, very engrossing uh, story. I, I understand it's also been made into into a video game. I've had some interaction uh, chats on on the chat video about this with people who have played the game and says it's pretty say it's pretty awesome. Um, but what it is, it's a story of uh, it's a first contact story, but the first contact between humans um, and the aliens is a contact with technology, not with the aliens themselves. The aliens have landed and left behind some technology that that's very dangerous and unpredictable to the humans. Um, and this story tells um, this book tells the story of one man who actually these zones where the um, where the different locations where the aliens landed are are dangerous, and so they're forbidden for people to go in there. But some people called stalkers do go into these zones and collect art, collect these uh, things for the black market, and it's very dangerous, obviously. Um, but it's it's uh, you know it's a very good story. Um, I thought it was a very interesting interesting take on first contact, where the contact is actually through unknown technology. Because you know if we don't know how to use it, uh, we don't know what it's for originally. Um, and so the, sometimes they're able to make sense of it, and, and most of the time not. Um, all right. So then the next book I read uh, in June, the Dervish House by the Dervish House by Ian McDonald. This was published back in 2010. This takes place in an Istanbul of the not too distant future, um, and um, where nanotechnology is actually exploding um, and changing uh, many many things. Um, the main character, the the, this is actually a series of characters that their lives sort of intersect in and around this old dervish house in Istanbul, where which has been converted into apartments. And um, so this story, uh, they all the characters sort of revolve around, revolve, get it, dervish, uh, around this dervish house. Um, and um, one of the characters is involved in a terrorist attack and um, has his life changed. He's then able, after this terrorist attack, to see jinn and religious figures and things like this. Um, and so it's, it's, it proves to be an unusual terrorist attack. Um, the book was, was really engaging. I thought it was really well written. I really enjoyed reading it. Um, so I actually had planned to read more Ian McDonald. I did not get him on my 2017 TBR, uh, for reasons I won't go into here. I was, the book I was going to read was not available electronically. So I just decided to put off reading him for now, but I will be addressing him again, reading more of him in the future at some point. Um, then in August, I read um, The Dragons of Heaven by Elise Helms. I'd actually had this on my want-to-read list since last year, where I, when I heard this author um, on a on a um, sort of a panel discussion um, on YouTube that I found on YouTube, and I thought she sounded really interesting, so I wanted to read her book. This uh, is a series. Um, the character here, this is a fantasy series. Um, this world is, uh, you know, it's urban fantasy. It's sort of re- very recognizable to us, except this this uh, world has superheroes in it, as well as uh, mythological beings, um, you know, exist in this um in, exist in this world, uh, specifically um, the um, the guardians of China. So there's, this book pulls in a lot of Chinese mythology and Chinese folklore. Um, I found it a lot, a lot of fun. I loved it. Um, there was more to it than I had actually expected, but it was just a lot of fun to read. I I, I really liked the main character, um, Missy M- Missy uh, Masters, and um, I just um, I just had a blast with this book. Um, so then the next book uh, I read was Fix by Ferret Steinmetz. This was published in 2016. I actually read this in October. Um, this is the third of a trilogy. I also love this trilogy. Ferret Steinmetz um, wrote a couple more. Uh, there's a couple more previous to this. Uh, it's called Flex is the first one, and then The Flux is the second one. This is the third. So when I heard that, that was coming, this was coming out in October, once I finished up my 2016, um, you know, want to read TBR, I actually uh, picked 
pick this book to pick up as one of my wild cards and uh, finishing out this series. I love this series. This was another uh, fantasy uh, series where um, the world is very recognizable as ours, except it has magic in it. And the magic is actually uh, people develop magic through obsession. So um, our main character here, Paul, on the cover um, is a he loves bureaucracy. He's obsessed with bureaucracy and paperwork. And so his uh, magic involves bureaucracy or you know, bureaucracy. So he's called a bureaucromancer. And um, there's a video game mancer. There's all sorts of types of mancers developed around mancy or magic developed around people's obsessions. And this is just a great world to go to. I just had such a blast with all three of these books. I think this series is now finished, unfortunately. Uh, but I will be watching for future things from Barrett Steinmetz because I love the way he writes. Now, next, and... Um, in November, I read the second book uh, by Elise Helms. This is the second book in the Missy Missy uh, Master Series that I mentioned just a bit ago. This is right after, uh, this was just published this year, and it's the book that follows the Dragons of Heaven, which can sort of continues this story of Missy Masters um, in her world where, uh, <laughs> where there's magic, there's uh, folkloric beings, there's, uh, there's um, the... The, folk, the mythological beings of China. Um, there's there's other realities that sit right next to ours. The Void Lands. Um, just a great world to go to. Uh, superheroes again. Um, I I really love the mix mismatch of this. You know the mythology combined with the superheroes. Um, just a lot of fun and uh, really well done to me. And uh, I will uh, I will waiting on the third one. I'm hoping there's going to be another one. I assume there will be. Then in November um, I finished up my science fiction fantasy um, by reading Viscera by Gabriel Squalia. Oh my gosh, this was so good. Um, I read last year. Um, I read a book by Gabriel Squalia called Dead Boys, which I'm, I actually am rereading in my month of December rereads. I just, um, just, um, in it, reading it right now. Um, and, um, I just love the way he writes. This is a fantasy, um, world where um there are there's a city built on the calcified remains of these long dead gods um and the the different characters in this book are so lively they go on a quest ultimately into this city that's built on the 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 calcified remains of the long dead gods um and it's just it was a great journey to go on with these characters it was funny it was macabre um just a great experience so love that book and um i'm happy to read dead boys again in the process of doing that so stay tuned for an upcoming video on that and um i will Will be watching for anything else that Gabriel Squalia uh, writes in the future because I enjoy his work so much. So I'm out of, almost out of time. I did want to close with a quote from The Dervish House by Ian McDonald because I think it's really appropriate as we're wrapping up this reading year. Um, the quote is this, um, true journey is a circle, a dervish's turn. So, you know, we started out the year, I started out the year reading The Book of Disquiet by Fernando Pessoa and I'm wrapping up the year now uh, with these wrap-ups and and getting ready to start it all over again in 2017. So I hope you'll stay tuned and come with me on that reading journey to come. So take care and I will catch you later. Bye.